Yes, Coach Gates will start with an opening statement before we move on to questions for him and Shawnees. Two, two great days of practice. I thought our guys did a tremendous job preparing. Our coaching staff did a tremendous job. Uh, excellent, excellent game plan. We held a, a team to 28% from the two, 22% uh, from three. Uh, I thought our guys executed everything. There are some plays that I wish we could get back uh, and somehow uh, make those open shots that we were right there able to take. Uh, they did fall for us. Uh, some of them was in us. All right, questions for Coach Gates and Sean East. The game was stopped with six seconds on the shot clock. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what was happening there? What's that? Can you repeat? So late in the game, the uh, the clock was stopped with six seconds on the shot clock. And so can you tell us a little bit about what was going on there from your perspective and how you perceived yeah. that moment? Yeah, uh, Jordan Butler had blood coming out of his nose, running down his face from the previous wall up. Um, I guess he caught an elbow um, in the nose or something like that that started that. So that's what the referees finally saw it trickling down and they paused the play at that point. Um, Sean, you know, Coach talked about the the game plan going up against Texas A&M. Y'all held them to below 30% from the field. Kind of what went into the defensive effort for you guys tonight? Uh, just emphasizing the standard that we, I mean, that we went out to set uh, this week in practice, and uh, we just executed it uh, for three days, two or three days, and uh, we showed it on the floor tonight. And uh, we just got to keep taking the right steps and, uh, you know, improving each and every day. Um, you know, the other part of it is we held a team to um, six total field goals in the first half. Uh, that's a tremendous, tremendous thing. And we wasn't able to come into halftime with a lead, which I thought the game, we should have been up 10, 15 points um, holding the team to that many field goals in that first half. Second half, the same. They got some easy baskets in transition uh, that that obviously cost us uh, from our turnovers. They had 21 points off the turnovers uh, and, I, and was able to execute once they got that ball. Coach, you mentioned missing some of the open shots there, but just in general, what do you diagnose as maybe the what proved costly as far as some of the offensive possessions go? What proved costly? Are you talking about throughout the game or a specific side of the ball? Oh, uh, throughout the game, but but especially in those last maybe five six minutes there. Uh, whenever you're in a close game, you got to try your best. I thought our guys did a, a great job getting to the foul line in that second half. Uh, we were four for four executing, um, but I was you know quite curious about you know the the part where um, we were able to get some looks but not execute. We got great shots. Uh, I'm not worried about that, but we weren't able to uh, execute how I wanted to in those situations. Um, Texas A&M is a good defensive team. Uh, I thought our guys did a great job of, um, you know, executing the game plan. And sometimes when you look at the percentages, you look at overall stats, the two categories that hurt us uh, was the points off turnovers that we gave up and we were negative assist to turnover ratio. Sean, the, you guys started six for nine, and then I think went eleven minutes. You only had two points in the first half. There, what was what was the the issue there? That the latter part of the first half. Uh, just uh, basketball is a game of runs. Um, I mean, we just you can't control if the ball's going in or in or out or not, but you can't control your defense. So we just kind of focus on that, and uh, you know, however the game presents itself is how we got to deal with it. But during that run, we had several turnovers, too. The bulk of our turnovers happened uh, during that run. I think we were seven or eight turnovers at that point in time. And we just, you know, we were trying to make the right play and maybe a foot off where we were supposed to be and, and whether the ball bounced a certain way. Guys were playing unselfish. They were able to get some looks. But, but those turnovers during that run as well hurt us. Any other questions? What went into the decision to uh, switch up starting lineup, bring in Jordan, and, and uh, have Noah come off the bench there? And how did you think that played out? Well, Jordan uh, did a great job last game, and I uh, wanted to reward him for that. Obviously, he had some great minutes tonight as well. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, when it comes down 
it's challenging. You know, I wanted to challenge our guys, uh, you know, specifically Noah Carter. Um, in that situation, he had zero rebounds last game uh, with 20 plus minutes of play. And I wanted to reward Jordan uh, for what he's done and what, what he's been able to accomplish. Hey, Zeus as well. Uh, he's done a great job. And I thought those guys uh, did a tremendous, tremendous thing throughout our practices, but also they've showed spark uh, that I thought allowed us to have a matchup advantage. Coach, how challenging is it? You got four, two guys with four fouls with 17 minutes left. Just kind of being able to get to the finish line there and mix in a match and line up. So what did you have to do differently? Well, I just left the guys in. Like, for instance, I left Noah in in the first half. I didn't sub out. Um, same with Jordan. I thought our guys did a good job playing without fouls. Uh, Tamar Bates, uh, in that one situation, uh, transition, he would have uh, fouled out. Uh, but we ended up with four, five guys with four fouls um, specifically. And I got to watch the film to see what we could do better. Any other questions? Coach, um, dating back to your time at Florida State, uh, you haven't dealt with too many losing streaks like this, um, even though you haven't had to deal with extended defeat uh, too many times before. Um, in a position of leadership, uh, how do you sort of deal with this sort of uh, relatively unprecedented uh, streak of defeat? Well, you look at the bright moments. I don't look at it as defeats. I look at it as lessons. And we're in a you know, infant stages of growth and we got to continue to fight and our guys are giving their very best and I'm proud of them being able to do that. Um, you look at different games that we've played or the games that we've lost, uh, we were right there. Uh, it could have gone either way and we just got to keep moving forward. And as a leader, I'm not going to stop coaching. I'm, I'm going to continue to um, be right there with the guys, continue to coach, continue to um bring our personality where it needs to be. And that's what we're doing, making sure we're staying cohesive. Uh, that is important, um, you know, throughout it all. All right, one last question. All right, good, thank you. M-I-Z.